it seems like at least once a year players in the rise of kingdoms community ask the question is rise of kingdoms finally dying as a matter of fact a lot of players don't even pose it as a question they state it as a fact with conviction even if the only evidence for that is just that they feel that way so of course it must be true so today we're going to take a look at some interesting data some actual numbers and i'm going to go over why i personally do not think rise of kingdoms is dying as a matter of fact i think right now is probably the best time to play rise of kingdoms especially as a returning player like if you quit the game one two three years ago like this is the time to come back to rise of kingdoms and even if you're a brand new player i think you're going to be getting the best possible version of rise of kingdoms right now even though there are still some road bumps for new players that i want to talk about later hopefully i'll remember to do that i've got a lot of bullet points here and this video is going to be more so of a little bit of a ramble a little bit of a discussion and so while we will look at some data here and some charts mainly i'm going to have some golden kingdom gameplay in the background so if you guys want to know like what my strategy is for golden kingdom you can just watch that and that'll show you guys how i think when i play that game mode but otherwise this video might be a little bit long so make sure you grab a drink grab a snack throw me on in the background or whatever and with that being said what's going on guys cheers so if you guys don't know i've been playing rise of kingdom since october of 2018 which is just about two or three months after the initial launch of the game and back then it was actually called the rise of civilization so i have been playing the game for nearly six years at this point which is actually insane to think about and so throughout the years i have seen and i've been there i have witnessed every single time that people are saying the game is dying and as a matter of fact i've made videos all along the way during all of those different milestones and you can look back on my channel and take a look and see what i was thinking what the community was kind of feeling at those moments in time and since i've seen the game in all these different states i can tell you about three reasons why players start to say that they think the game is dying the first one is unpopular updates right the game will come out with an update it'll come out with you know crystal tech or armaments or you know the healing help limit or whatever the case might be and you know the the update will be so unpopular that people will say oh like i'm gonna quit people are quitting blah 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 the second thing that causes people to say that the game is dying is that if the meta is too stale for a while right and i think that just a little bit of a spoiler i think that's where we're at right now i think that we've had the same sort of open field rally garrison meta since like December it's been like six months it's it's pretty much been the same thing you know once Herman Prime came out he was kind of the last thing that really like shifted the meta in any meaningful way at least for open field Ashurbanipal obviously still pretty much the rally meta and we still have Gorgo for the garrison and all things like that and so really there hasn't been much change to the meta and so I think some people are just a little bit bored and the third reason or third event that I think causes people to say that the game is dying is if there are some big players that quit or if there are some big kingdoms that fall apart a little bit we saw this you know in the past with like bunny leaving the game and we saw well there's been lots of players that have left and we already know that a lot of people are talking right now in the community about the current state of imperium kingdoms and how becoming an imperium kingdom sort of feels like a death sentence to a kingdom like you really want to avoid that right which i think is you know we're not going to talk about imperiums in this video but i do think that there probably should be some optimization to how imperiums work with the current state of the game but those are really the three and honestly i would say the biggest ones are the first two right unpopular updates and also you know boring stale meta and i'm here to tell you that you know these are anecdotal and subjective feelings that players get that aren't typically you know backed up by data so for example i was there when they released crystal tech everyone said that the game was dying and they were going to quit i was there when they released armaments and everyone said that the game was dying and they're going to quit i was there when they introduced the iconic tier system and everyone said that this kills free to play and everyone's going to quit i was there when they implemented the healing help limit which was actually a horrible update there people said they were going to quit i was there when they released the uh, ap cap for barb forts another horrible update people said that they were going to quit and so I've, I've been here i've seen it all okay do not quote the ancient texts to me for i was there when they were written okay anyway all that to say that none of these big bad updates actually killed the game and this sort of brings us to our first quote unquote data point okay and that is the speed with which new kingdoms are opened in rise of kingdoms and here you can see that kingdom 3545 was opened three and a half days ago kingdom 3546 opened about 
two days ago and the newest kingdom right now 3547 opened just over one day ago and so right now I think because it's June because it's the summer I do think that there is a relatively big marketing push for mobile games at the moment because a lot of kids especially in the United States are off from school but it seems like we're seeing a new kingdom open about once every day or every day and a half maybe two days and I would say during the down periods when there's less marketing for the game like I'm thinking like maybe around February or around like I don't know just like these weird moments in time where like there's not that much happening I would say even in those times we're still seeing a new kingdom open every two and a half to three and a half days something like that and the way that you know players have speculated that these new kingdoms open because I don't think Lilith has ever been you know fully transparent about this and I think that they themselves have changed this over time some people claim that the first milestone of a kingdom opening is basically what determines when the next kingdom opens so basically 20,000 governors entering the Bronze Age once this has been reached for a kingdom that's when the next kingdom opens some players claim that it's between six and ten thousand players reaching City Hall 8 which if you guys didn't know Bronze Age is City Hall level 4 so yeah there's a couple of different metrics that people use but generally even if we look at sort of the middle of the ground there let's say it's 10,000 players you know active players in a kingdom you know 10,000 players if we're seeing a new kingdom open every day or every two days five to ten thousand new players or at least new accounts being registered every day is a really healthy number now if you're watching this and you have a little bit more precise information about when a new kingdom opens you can let me know in the comment section below I haven't played in a brand new kingdom in a really long time so my knowledge on that might be a little bit outdated but as far as I know that is generally the case okay and even if you make the argument that a lot of those new accounts in those new servers are people that are like restarting or people who are like looking to participate in a jumper project or whatever the case might be like if you have that many people that are engaged in your game enough to do that every day then that is still also a healthy metric for the game okay so we know the game is getting thousands of new players or people playing on new servers every single day next let's take a look at some of the revenue and download numbers that we have available to us from sensor tower now i don't have full enterprise access to everything that sensor tower has to offer i have reached out to them and they typically do business to business sales and the price that they quoted me for all of the you know information that they can provide is in the five figures and i that's just insane so i'm not going to pay that but there is some free data on their website that we have access to and i have no way of verifying if this information is entirely accurate but it's worth noting that sensor tower has been around for a long time and they do track this data for like thousands and thousands of apps all around the world like this is what they do professionally right and so this is the best data that we have at least to my knowledge if anyone watching this from Lilith wants to provide me with actual numbers I'd be happy to share that in a follow-up video but here we can see the top performers for Lilith games in the Apple App Store and we also have the same data for the Android Google Play Store now here you can see the number one game for Lilith games is Rise of Kingdoms of course and we could see the initial release date was September of 2018 last month the game had about 300,000 downloads and made about eight million dollars now again this is just last month alone for Apple App Store next we can take a look at the same thing for the Android Google Play Store and we'll see once again that Rise of Kingdoms was their top performer with about 400,000 downloads and 4 million in revenue and so if we want to look at Rise of Kingdoms as a whole for both Android and iOS we would have to add those numbers so last month they got 700,000 downloads last month and 12 million in revenue does 12 million dollars a month sound like a dying game to you that doesn't sound like a dying game to me and also keep in mind that rise of kingdoms is also available on the huawei app store huawei app gallery whatever they call it these days i, I forgot and also players like to play on the pc client which is how i play and that's how most of the serious you know high-end whale players that's how they play right and so a lot of the revenue that rise of kingdoms gets is actually not even recorded here because it goes directly to lilith either through the flux script system that they have or through like paypal for example like if you just buy in the actual in-game store on the PC version you'll go through like PayPal for example and so it just goes directly to Lilith games and so you don't have that intermediary of the iOS app store or the Android Google Play store and so I think it's safe to say that like 12 million as a monthly revenue is a very conservative number right I would say it's probably like 15 million or more to be honest with you guys right 15 million dollars a month on the conservative end for a video game is a highly successful video game okay so from even from a revenue perspective 
the game is nowhere close to dying okay and just for comparison right because maybe like monthly revenue for a video game like that's not typically a statistic that people think about let's look at far light games okay far light games is basically from my understanding and i could be wrong about this but it seems like it is sort of the singapore branch of lilith games i'm they're basically the same sort of company that's my understanding i think far light is responsible for localizing games to other countries again i could be wrong about that and you can let me know in the comment section below but here we can see the top performers for far light games on the iOS app store and you can see AFK journey which I think recently just came out and is also there was a big marketing push behind this I think even like Ludwig for example on YouTube was part of a big marketing push here so yeah AFK journey is popping off right now last month 300k downloads but Call of Dragons is like sort of the direct competitor that Lilith or Farlight Games released for Rise of Kingdoms and I wouldn't say competitor but more so like a spiritual successor like it's supposed to be like the next step in the next evolution of the city builder genre and call of dragons here ios app store 100,000 downloads 2 million in revenue last month and then if we look at the google play store you could see call of dragons coming in third place actually in terms of monthly downloads but obviously way more revenue than second place here farlight 84 but call of dragons for the google play store has 200,000 downloads and 1 million in revenue and so if we add those two together call of dragons made about 3 million last month and had about 300,000 downloads so rise of kingdoms is significantly more successful than call of dragons and is definitely being rivaled by afk journey to be honest with you guys which is very impressive stuff it's a very different game afk journey but it's at least worth pointing out so okay from a new player engagement perspective or at least players playing on new servers the game is not dying and from a monthly revenue perspective the game is also not dying also from a downloads perspective I mean we're talking about 700,000 downloads per month right that's over 23,000 downloads a day and so you can't really make the argument that like oh well the, the new servers are all filled with like jumper projects and old players and farm accounts and blah 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 it's like okay if that's true then what are the 23,000 new downloads do like where are they going right they have to be going to the new servers obviously so now well it's also worth noting that of the 23,000 people that download the game every single day probably 50 percent of them don't come back right I mean that's just that's not even a rise of kingdoms thing that's just a mobile game thing that happens all the time with free to play games city builder games things like that people see the ad on TikTok or whatever they download the game the ad was different from the game and so they delete the game right away and that's it you get a 50 percent bounce rate right away it could be higher it could be 60 or whatever but let's just assume that you know if there's 24,000 people a day downloading the game 12,000 of them even come back the next day right or 10,000 right and I think if that's the case suddenly the new server numbers don't seem to be so outrageous after all right and this really isn't that surprising rise of kingdoms is sort of the best in class for a relatively niche category right i mean we have the mobile city builder genre and there's a lot of games in this genre but for the past six years rise of kingdoms has continued to be the number one player in that space in that sort of niche it is a massive fish in a relatively small pond and i think that there's a lot of reasons for that i think obviously the infinite zoom feature and the open field combat that feature are very very good I think that it has a very good theme and in, in terms of like it being historically significant and the fact that it uses real commanders from history and on top of that rise of kingdoms has a very unique advantage in that it was popular during the pandemic right I think the pandemic gave rise of kingdoms an artificially higher sort of baseline and a massive influx of players during that time and so while the city builder niche is relatively small I think that there was an above average interest in the niche when players and people in general were kind of stuck inside and just downloading things on their phone to see what kind of new games are out there right and because of that massive community that exploded during that time period it gave rise of kingdoms a sort of higher baseline for community size and for games like this community size is like the number one most important factor for whether people stick around or whether people stick to the game right and think about like you know if you're going to spend rise of kingdoms is a very time intensive and time demanding game right if you're going to spend four hours a week playing a mobile game right and you're going to do that for months at a time you want to do that on a game that has a big player base so that way your accomplishments in the game can be shown off to people it means more to more people right i mean this this happens in every genre it's not just city builders if you're looking to play a new mmorpg are you going to look to play a game that is you know it's 
on its last legs it doesn't really have a big player base not many people are enjoying the game and it's kind of dying or you're gonna look to play one of the bigger ones like you know world of warcraft or final fantasy or maybe like old school runescape right like i don't really know uh, besides those i don't really know if there are very many big mmorpgs right now but you're certainly more likely to play world of warcraft than you are to play new world for example even though new world is a newer game it has arguably better graphics depending on what you like in graphics like art style is is different but in general like those genres are top heavy because you want your accomplishments in the game to be long lasting right like the games that have lasted the longest are more likely to last longer right and also if there's more players then there's more people to look at your you know account and be like oh my god your account is like so good or whatever and so rise of kingdoms had that sort of big player base inflation during the pandemic that gives it a really unique position in the market on top of the fact that it is arguably one of the best if not the best from a mechanics perspective even lilith and farlight games themselves have trouble competing with their own game i mean we saw that with call of dragons right if any game developer game studio should have the insight and tools to make a game that would be more successful than rise of kingdoms you would think it would be the game that made rise of kingdoms right i mean that just makes sense and yet call of dragons what as we just saw from the download numbers and the revenue numbers it's still a successful game but it's nowhere near what rise of kingdoms is still doing to this day even though rise of kingdoms is five years older than call of dragons at this point right or four years older however you want to look at it and so rise of kingdoms has a unique position in the market but it's still performing super well based on all the metrics that we can see however you'll notice in the title of this video if i was being if i was being extra clickbaity uh then you'll notice in the title of this video i called it no rise of kingdoms isn't dying but and in this part of the video we're going to talk about the but okay so far we've talked about all the data that suggests rise of kingdoms is not dying and in this part of the video we're going to talk about the but okay we're talking about the booty in this part of this we're talking about the booty in this part of the video okay the butt itself and if you've made it this far into the video drop a thumbs up on it and consider subscribing if you're not most of you guys actually aren't subscribed you think you are but you're not double check if you've made it this far into the video hopefully you guys will do that but here's something that is worth noting old players for any game will always eventually quit okay old players always quit we see this and i've made this example early in, earlier in the video but world of warcraft right world of warcraft has been around for like 25 years the game is not dying but it is not as healthy as it was before and there's been plenty of players who maybe they played for the first five years and then quit maybe they played the first 10 years and then they quit and sometimes it's the fault of the game but oftentimes it's not oftentimes people just move on from games that they have gotten their fill out of right and this is something that i think a lot of players don't really understand they think that these big negative updates oh my god this is going to kill the game and it's like no actually people just quit when they feel like it or when it makes the most sense in their lives right it's when the pain and pleasure threshold is off balance right they're actually they're getting less satisfaction from the game than the game is providing in return and that's basically if players stay in that state too long that's when they end up quitting and i would say the biggest contributing factors to this a lot of times are just your own personal anecdotal experience in the game right if your friend group quits if your kingdom dies then you're having a worse experience individually right regardless of how the rest of the game is performing but even beyond that right like let's talk about how the game's six years old your life has probably changed significantly in the past six years a lot of people's lives did if you started playing the game in high school you're in college now if you started playing the game in college you might be in the workforce if you started playing the game when you were single you might be married now like a lot changes in six years in five years in three years however long you've been playing the game and think about like how many games out there keep players playing for three years five years six years whatever it's not that many a lot of times people buy a game for 60 dollars, they play it for 50 hours and then they put it down some games like call of duty keep you you know they release a new game every year and every year it's a worse game than the last one like I mean in my opinion but you know people play it for the first two three months and then they put it down or whatever the case might be right and it's very rare that players stick around a game for three five years it's just that's a long time for any video game objectively it doesn't matter what game we're talking about so this is not a unique problem to rise of kingdoms people's lives change their interests change over time their lifestyle changes their income changes and so there's always going to be old players quitting a game and that 
that's not necessarily the fault of the game that's just what happens with entertainment right entertainment is always transient sometimes star wars films comes out and star wars is like the talk of the town for a moment and then it moves on and then there's a new marvel movie that comes out and then that's the talk of the town and then that and then we move on from that right entertainment is always transient so rise of kingdoms isn't going to stop losing old players at no real fault of their own but one thing that rise of kingdoms is responsible for is the onboarding and the positive experience for new players right if you can't stop old players from quitting right they're just some are just going to quit all the time then you have to have a new player experience that is desirable that can ideally at least replace the old players leaving or even better get more new players than you lose every single month and if you're gaining more new players than you're losing then you have a growing game and if you're losing more players than you're gaining you have a declining game and if those numbers are about the same then your game is pretty stagnant over time and we're going to take a look at some google trends data here in just a second but if you've been following this channel over the past couple of weeks then you'll know that rise of kingdoms is on the cusp of releasing a massive graphical overhaul and honestly i've never seen this in a city builder game before you guys can let me know in the comment section below but on mobile right as a mobile game have we ever seen a city builder game like rise of kingdoms do a massive graphical overhaul like this i can't think of any so you guys can let me know but we are about to get and we've already seen multiple reveals trailer reveals for this new revamped and remastered graphics and this graphics update to my surprise has been shockingly polarizing I would say a majority of players are still pretty positive about the graphical update but a lot of people don't like change right a lot of people don't like change and what I think a lot of the older players for rise of kingdoms don't realize is that the graphical update is great for the older players who want it and like it myself included but really the graphical update is not for the older players it's for the new players it's for onboarding new players to the game that's really what this is all about because objectively rise of kingdoms looks much older than a lot of the other city builder games in the market and so if a new player downloads rise of kingdoms let's say that they're under the age of 20 okay and they see that the game looks like it's six years old because it is then they're more likely to not log in that second day regardless of how you feel about the game regardless of how you feel about how it looks or how it plays or whatever the case might be just from a purely like cosmetic point of view the game to a brand new player looks a little bit outdated right now and so what rise of kingdoms is doing and this you know they haven't told me this but it's obvious is that they're updating the graphics for the entire game i mean why would they spend all of this development time and money and making all these art assets for a six-year-old game like why would they do that if they didn't think that they would be recouping that sunk cost in some form or fashion later down the line and the answer is that if the game looks better for new players new players are more likely to continue playing and that's really the truth behind this graphical update it's not for you if you've been playing the game for five years and you don't mind how it looks or you like how it looks right now that's fine if you don't like the new graphics well unfortunately it's not really for you and the truth is that if you don't like the new graphic style but you want rise of kingdoms to last five more years then you want the new graphical update i mean it's just that simple like you want the game to succeed and the game is trying to do that by appealing to newer players with a newer graphical style and i mean that's kind of an open and shut case that's what this is all about so even if you don't like the new graphics you do like the new graphics it's just you have to think about it for more than two seconds right that's really the truth and this is why rise of kingdoms needs new players okay and you know again in the title of this video i put the but and this is the but but is that we are at a like three year low for rise of kingdoms right now right we are at a 30 and the last time we were at 30 was March of 2021 now what we're looking at here is worldwide Google searches for these respective games call of dragons in red rise of kingdoms in blue over the past five years now this chart I think provides very accurate and important data and metrics that we can use but it's not perfect right this is not a chart of player count but i think that you know general interest in a search topic is probably correlated to how popular the game is right i mean it, it makes sense if there's more people playing it there's more people probably searching up guides for it searching up commander information we can even do this for youtube search as well and you can see that the trend looks pretty similar right i mean we're looking at a 27 right now last time we were at a 27 well we were at a 30 in may at the end of may june 1st of 2021 
2022 so two years ago for YouTube we've basically been pretty consistent for the past two years for rise of kingdoms content on YouTube which is nice for me but it would be much nicer if we were at a 60 right or it'd be much nicer if we were at a 100 right it'd be much nicer if this number was much higher on the chart and the only way we're going to do that if we know that old players always eventually slowly quit over time the only way to do that is just, is to gain new players to get more new players that's how this chart shoots up instead of down over time right this time next year I hope that we're at a 35 or a 45 instead of a 25 or a 20 right that would be really bad and I think that if you are a long-term player of this game and you want the game to continue to be successful you want that as well and again this is what comes back to the graphical update for rise of kingdoms the idea behind this is to make the graphics more mass appealing to look better to more people and especially people probably under the age of 25 right I mean you you really there's only so many people over the age of 25 or over the age of 30 that has the amount of time to commit to a game like rise of kingdoms the game does require a big time commitment and a lot of times if you're an adult and most of you watching are over the age of 25 and you're a male like literally 98 or 96 percent of you guys are male something like that shout out to the three or four percent female viewers but rise of kingdoms has to appeal to younger players as well and so the graphical update is for those newer players and for those younger players in hopes of bringing this number back up and so this should go without saying but this new graphical update is one of the reasons why I think if you're a brand new player you're getting the best possible version of rise of kingdoms it has been refined over the past six years and now it's getting a fresh coat of paint and along with a coat of paint it is in theory at least going to perform better on most devices I mean we saw in the official rise of kingdoms videos they said that the frame rate was actually improved for devices as old as the iPhone 7 if not older all the way up to some of the newer devices like the iPhone 12 13 14 whatever and so this is like the best actual version of rise of kingdoms now that's not to say that new players don't have a really hard time with the game right now and I think that that's in a whole other video in itself and I think you know the biggest issues for new players are you know the progression to late game I don't think there is great progression to the end game right now to season of conquest there's a lot of commanders that like you they just they, they are not relevant by the time you get to the end game and so like there's a lot to be desired there and I, maybe I'll talk about that in another video I've talked about it in the past already so I don't really want to beat it at horse but oh my god I just realized I'm gonna I'm gonna be wearing a different watch band for this part of the video but the counter argument to this being the best Best version of rise of kingdoms is that a lot of people say well it's great that they updated the graphics but what about all the systems that need improving right like people aren't huge fans of crystal tech and armaments and all that other stuff and that's true and I'm with you on that but these things are not mutually exclusive right we can get a new graphical update and they can still improve the game later down the line there's probably a big team of people working on rise of kingdoms it's a massive game and so the people responsible for like the art assets and all that other stuff they're probably not involved that much in like the game balance of rally and garrison meta and like the next system come into the game like these are totally separate things and i think if you want to have a discussion about improvements that the game needs that's fine but hating the graphical update because there are things that you think deserve priority that doesn't make any sense at all it's not like one is taking away from the other these are totally separate things one is how the game actually looks visually and plays and functions frames per second wise and the other one is like a commentary about the systems and the meta and those types of things and again these are like totally separate things it's not like there's one guy working at Lilith games and he can only do one thing at a time like no I'm sure they're working on both of these things simultaneously but right now we're doing the graphics update it's time for that now I want to touch on one other thing I mentioned at the very beginning of this video and that is that if you are a returning player this is the best time to return to rise of kingdoms and first of all it's because it's gonna look and play better than ever which is amazing but beyond that remember I said earlier that the meta has been kind of stagnant for the last six months and I think that that lends really well to returning players not having as much to catch up on right so for example if you quit in like October of 2022 right or right after like Joan of Arc Prime came into the game well great news Nevsky and Joan are still like the single best Cavalry March in the entire game and if you're running two Cavalry Marches you're probably running the second as Hua William or maybe you have the secondary switch but it doesn't matter William is an old commander that if you played back in the day you probably still have him and so you can still use him in the open field today now is he the best secondary in the world no but I would argue he's still easily part of the best five army murder ball now 
three years ago you might have been using him with saladin william right which you know saladin has a relic now so you can actually jump back in and you know make him a little bit better now is saladin still good no he's not still good but saladin william with the relic it's not like the end of the world if you use that and you can use that until you get enough sculptures to get a huo or who else whoever else you want and then what other big things are you missing well you're missing liu che right which is good but if you had guan Scipio back then i'm i used guan Scipio in my most recent kvk it was fine is it the best single infantry march in the game right now no but it's still usable and great news if you had alexander the great well he's probably better today than he was when you quit because you can put him behind liu che and all of a sudden you have basically a meta open field infantry army now i think archers are probably where things have changed the most these days where we have both herman prime and Zhuge Liang came into the game since the end of 2022 but before that you were probably running Boudicca prime with nebu and some people are still running that commander pairing or at least they're using them in separate ways usually it's like nebu with something and then Boudicca prime with something but yeah i mean that's probably the weakest army that we've talked about so far in this video but like it wouldn't be the end of the world to use that and again worst case scenario we're looking at like what since october of 2022 you will have missed like three must-have commanders in Zhuge Liang, Herman Prime, and Liu Che, right? Uh, and then one decent commander, which is Huo, right? He's very solid. I use him all the time. I wouldn't say he's must-have, but like he is one of the best cavalry commanders in the game right now for open field. But three must-have commanders in a two-year gap of not playing the game, like that's not bad. You'll still have good commanders to use if you had decent pairings when you quit back then. Now, of course, there are other things in the game like armaments and like the iconic tier system for equipment and all the other stuff. But truthfully, you don't need like iconic tier five everything to work in the open field right there's still even a couple of epic pieces of equipment that you can still make good use out of like the Karox humility with a special talent for infantry or heart of the saint with a special talent for cavalry like there's still good epic pieces that you can rock into season of conquest right I, lots of people are still doing that that's obvious so yes there will be things you'll have to catch up on but it's not like you've missed a full two years worth of meta changing content so jumping back in today with the brand new graphics and the improved frame rate wouldn't be like like the end of the world and you could always join in a new kingdom or a new server and spend some time to like catch up to some of the end game players and then migrate to maybe a more competitive kingdom in like let's say six months from now that's just my two cents at least so in conclusion no rise of kingdoms is not at its peak but no it is not dying the worst that you could say about rise of kingdoms right now is that it is stagnant and it has been stagnant for like a year or more but they're clearly trying to appeal to new players with a big marketing push and and clearly the game is still getting tens of thousands of downloads a month and is making literally millions of dollars a month over 10 million dollars a month rough estimate so the game is not dying it is a little stagnant right now but the new updates coming are looking to try to fix that problem and with all of that being said I would love to know what you guys think in the comments section below how do you feel about the current state of rise of kingdoms do you think the game is dying do you think that the game is more healthy now than ever I would love to hear from you in the comments section below while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it. Also, while you're down there, double check to see if you're subscribed. You're probably not. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.